So what exactly is a drone? Um, in my opinion, a drone is, is something that can autonomously make decisions on its own. This right here is a Roomba. Some of you might know what it is. Um, it's something about the size of a pizza and runs around your apartment picking up Cheetos. Um, why do different industries use drones? Um, there's really three uh, reasons, I think. Um, uh, for jobs that are dull, um, dangerous, and dirty. Um, so for the rest of the talk, we're going to be looking at something that looks like this. Um, this is a, a fixed wing drone right here, um, a little propeller in the back, um, one solid wing, and there's a camera on the bottom for collecting imagery. Um, there's also something that looks like this. This is a quadcopter because it has four rotors on it, something that's sitting right in front of you right now. Um, I like to compare the drone industry to um, what the computer industry was early on. Uh, you know, there was a couple of people doing some things, um, but really there was just so much that could be done, um, and people were slowly figuring things out. Um, and as people figured out, uh, you know, how to make computers faster and smaller, um, we started to get things like our cell phone, which are super powerful. Um, and really with this, the dawn of the cell phone, um, we started to get microprocessors that we could put into small flying drones like this. Um, so there's this inherent connection between the two. Um, and really, you know, like I said, there's a lot possible. Um, let's see if this will play. Um, some people are really bored with drones. Um, so this guy right here taxidermied his dead cat and put it on a drone. Uh, <laughs> come on, internet. Let's see. All right, flying dead cat. <laughs> yeah, quadrocapter. Exactly. Um, um, so why drones for OSM? Um, a lot of you will, uh, you know what this GIF is right here. Um, some it's tracing um, a ballpark into OSM. Um, this is really great, and I'm really thankful that we have Digital Globe and different satellite providers giving us imagery um, to trace objects into OSM. Uh, but really, the, the objects that we're getting out are only as good as the imagery going in. Um, and we have a breakdown that looks like this. We have satellite imagery that, uh, you know, we're getting something like 50 centimeter resolution imagery. Um, super, super expensive. Uh, latency is, is a, a little long. Um, manned aircraft, um, you can't cover as much area. It's also very expensive and time consuming. Um, and then, you know, we have terrestrial means. Um, and then there's this gap in, in between, you know, what we can do on the ground and manned aircraft. And, and this is where drones fit in. Um, you know, just a, a quick comparison between satellite imagery and what can uh, be captured by uh, a small micro drone. Um, this is this area right here, fantastic resolution. Um, and sometimes it's not even really the, the resolution uh, that's the issue. This is not even a comparison. This is stitch imagery right here. So um, we're dealing with cloudy imagery, uh, black and white imagery, and also color imagery all in one place. And you know, if we could have better imagery, it would just be something better than this. Um, so now Batiste is going to talk a little bit about the workflow of uh, how to capture imagery with drones. Yeah, and, and first of all, how a, a drone works, so I guess the most important thing is um, it's very easy to use. So every one of you, if you want to use a drone and create your own maps, that's pretty easy. Now the technology makes it very affordable. And uh, it's based actually on a three steps process. The first one is always create a mission, do a flight planning. So you have proprietary software, you have also open source software that allow you to design the area you'd like to map, and that will automatically generate a flight plan. Then the drone will automatically follow that route, uh, thanks to the GPS on board and all the sensors, a little bit comparable to what happens with aircraft. Um, and while the, the UAV is flying, it will automatically take uh, pictures at a given frequency, okay? And after that, you have the processing step where you will actually correlate uh, the pictures and the flight information to create 2D and 3D maps. Uh, once again, it's a fully automatic process, so you do not need to be an expert in GIS or surveying to create accurate data. It does it of the known. Um, I guess the, the most critical part is uh, the flight planning, since um, it requires some skills. 
the first thing is actually you will just need to draw the area that you'd like to survey. So that's an example of Emotion 2, which is the flight management software that comes with our product. So you just draw the area you'd like to map. And And after uh, that, the software will be able to draw for you the mission and the flight route, um, given the accuracy that you want for your final map. You just select the direction for the takeoff and landing. I mean, the only thing to know is that the UAV will, take, will do the takeoff and the landing into the wind. And finally, you can see your mission in 3D and monitor the UAV when it's in flight. So you see, pretty simple process. Uh, once again, everybody could, in that room, go and fly his own UAV. Now I just want to show you quickly how to use it. And that's a video that we shot uh, in Switzerland at the top of the Matterhorn, which is the biggest summit in the Swiss Alps. So uh, to start the engine, you just need to shake the uh, UAV three times. And then it's hand launched and fully autonomous. So you just throw it in the air, and you will automatically go and follow its flight plan. And then you have the processing operation. So as I said, the, the UAV will take several shots during the flight. And using the GPS information of um, the, the GPS on board, you will be able to uh, stitch the, those pictures together. But not only stitch, but also rectify them. It means like uh, removing all the distortion created by the, the, the pitch of the aircraft. And you'll be able also to create uh, accurate 3D models from the area yet that you've just flown over with an accuracy of five uh, centimeters. So just to give you once again an example, uh, that's the result of the project that we've done on the Swiss Alps. So results of about six hours flight, 2,000 pictures, uh, combined together to create the most accurate 3D data of the Matterhorn ever made. Uh, to give you an example, it took... <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, to, to give you an example, like the German Aerospace Center, it took them about two weeks with uh, satellites and a few million dollars just to create a 50 centimeter accurate model of that mountain. And with a six drone, we made it in six hours, okay? So it gives you the, uh, the, an idea of the power of the technology. Um, now I, I'm just going to explain a little bit how I see the integration of the UAV technology in OpenStreetMap. So imagine that you have a project that you'd like to design or monitor. So first thing, you'll go on the field, and you will plan your flight with your aircraft. You will collect the pictures and create your 2D and 3D models. If you're not satisfied with the results, I mean, instead of paying a lot more to get new satellite imagery, you just need to plan another flight and fly again, OK? If you're satisfied with it, you can just import your maps and start your tracing in OpenStreetMap. You can analyze, you can share your data as you wish. And then you can assess the situation, like look for the needs, the dangers in the area, I mean everything that is related to your project, and make concrete, concrete proposals. And then once the project is done, you just need to fly again to do some impact analysis, okay? And basically that workflow was used by the United Nations in Haiti after the earthquake in 2009. And with the IOM and UNITOR and SenseFly together, um, they've done a project to do um, several things. Actually give support to the authorities to check for the, um, um, I would say, um, the 
post disaster uh, assessments after that earthquake. The idea was to organize and schedule a census report based on the images provided by the UAV. <coughs> so why mapping? Because uh, given the accuracy of the UAV and the maps that it generates, you can identify and count the number of tents and habitations and then schedule your door-to-door -door census of the population. You can then check for the needs in terms of um, habitations, um, create a budget, and then at the end uh, build permanent infrastructure for the population. So uh, that's an area where um, you had those tents. To, if you zoom in, you can see on the right um, the different uh, tents go a little bit further and count the number of tents. And then it makes you I mean, able just to monitor your project, create your real infrastructure. And that second mission was uh, related to uh, that project in Haiti. But just to, to give you an idea of the timeline of, uh, of that technology, like they were doing that project to count the number of tents in uh, Port-au-Prince in Haiti. And in the meantime, there was the Hurricane Sandy. So actually, they used the drone for another project, which was um, checking the damages of the Sandy storm on the Poro Prince city. So you see that with the accuracy that you get on, on the maps, it's really easy to compare um, two different maps and see from one day to another what change in the infrastructure. And you see that on that map, we can count the number of buildings that were destroyed during the, um, the storm and also the one that were damaged. So really important to use uh, that technology because it creates accurate maps but also up-to-date maps. And when I say up-to-date, it's not like one day after, two days after, one week after, it's just one hour after. And uh, finally, the last project I want to talk about is uh, a project led by Drone Adventure. And um, I, I just want to have a few words about it because it's a very nice um, initiative from one of uh, the guys in that room. So Adam is here. And if you want to talk a little bit more about Drone Adventure and take part in that uh, adventure, just try to have a few words with him. So Drill Adventures just promotes the use of UAV technology by doing some humanitarian projects around the, the world. They were in Haiti, in the Philippines also, uh, and in Fukushima in Japan. And that project was actually uh, helpful to design the new infrastructure network, road network, but also do some risk reduction. So as I said, with um, the UAV, you can create very accurate 2D maps. So that's an example of the maps that we've created. So basically, you can see the changes in the road network, infrastructure network. So that's a comparison between the images collected by the drone and what Google Maps stands for. So changes in, in the network. But also, uh, being able to create a 3D um, elevation model of the, um, of the area. And based on that, you can do with ArcGIS or other software like water flow simulations and get um, results in 2D and overlay the danger zones in OpenStreetMap. Then you can share that, that data to allow the people on the field like uh, urbanists or um, at least the local authorities just giving them an ID on the safe zones in order to build those new infrastructure, okay? Once again, the ID here is use the data that you collect with the drone uh, to um, calculate things, at least having some relevant information and then share that information in OpenStreetMap. And the last thing is a quick video that will show you part of that project of 2D, 3D reconstruction of that dangerous area in Haiti.
So you see here that's the result of the processing operation of 3D elevation data we create either like point clouds or digital surface models. Okay, now Bobby will talk about a recent project that we've done together and how to integrate it into <coughs> OpenStreetMap. Yeah, we, we did a, a little weekend project um, just as really as a proof of concept. Um, we flew uh, a vineyard uh, in uh, Virginia. Um, this is the, the final uh, ortho that we collected. Um, it was probably, I don't know, 100 photos. Um, and we're hanging out right there. Um, the resolution is around three centimeters? Yeah. yeah, three centimeter resolution. Um, and, and really it was a, a, a simple workflow once we had the ortho. Um, so uh, from there we, we brought in the tile mill um, and then, oh, I think this is supposed to be an animated GIF. Um, we brought in the tile mill, uploaded it to mapbox.com um, and then uh, with the new ID editor you can bring in your own um, imagery layer um, and then we trace the objects in. Um, and this is just what it looks like afterwards. Um, yeah, and if you want to get started, um, I've got a, a repo going on GitHub right now. Um, there's going to be some tutorials and just some flight data that I've done um, and just like a little how-to area. Um, yeah, and that's it.